You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On the show today, we'll discuss Nigeria's target of a sub-100 ranking in the 2020 World Bank Doing Business Report. You can join the conversation, just use the hashtag Beyond Market, and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. The federal government of Nigeria says it plans to double its target this year by moving Nigeria's ranking to sub-100 in the 2020 World Bank Doing Business Report. Jumoke Oduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, joined me to discuss the strategy in place to achieve this target. Now, PEBEC is in its third year, and I mean, it's been quite a journey. But let's, before we go into 2019, in terms of what you've planned and what you're going to be building on from 2018, let's just do a brief recap of 2018 in terms of what you would say were the highlights in terms of performance and the kind of feedback that you got and just overall performance of PEBEC? PEBEC uh, executed about 53 reforms last year. So it was, it was a, like the second highest, 2017 being the highest number of reforms we pushed. Now this captures both the homegrown indicators, feedback from private sector, and of course the World Bank indicator areas that we're tracking. I think what was most important for us was that in total, in the last um, three years, we've moved up, up 24 points and more importantly perhaps than the rankings is that our basis points percentage wise we've moved up over 11 points in the last three years which is huge it's a okay. huge jump yeah so but would you say that for the average businessman because I mean that's the whole point of the yeah. presidential enabling business environment council is to make doing business in Nigeria a lot easier. Mm -hmm. We know what, I mean, obviously there are bottlenecks, but the, the plan is to help business people, businessmen and women overcome those, uh, those obstacles and restrictions. Would you say that the life of the average or those who uh, took advantage of it were a lot better in terms of, I mean, looking back on the feedback that you got and perhaps also the complaints that you got, yeah. would you say that that was achieved? Definitely. We've systemically been attacking perhaps little tactical things that some people may not even notice unless it concerns you. And so really making registration much easier, leveraging technology, uh, reducing costs, making sure things are more efficient in terms of time. Uh, we've got good feedback from private sector across the board. There's still, of course, a lot to do. But what we're pleased about is that around the country, not just Lagos and Kano, we've been to Aba, we've been to Gombe, we've been to all sorts of places and we're addressing specific areas raised by those SMEs. Would you say that uh, a good number of SMEs are aware of what PEBEC is doing and, what, and how PEBEC mm. is, uh, I mean, the fact that PEBEC is just trying to make their lives easier and using things like the app, for instance, complaining or giving feedback, would you say that, would you say that a good number of them are aware that this is available to help them? Not enough, definitely not enough. I mean, one of the things we tried to prioritize last year was more engagement. We do go around, even the VP goes around with the SME clinics, he's been to over 20 states, but it's just a drop in the ocean. This is a large country, and about 90% of all businesses in Nigeria are SMEs. So we continue to look for creative ways. This year we're actually launching, but I'll wait for the 2019, okay. let me not give it away. Okay. <laughs> but communication has been a big challenge, just in terms of the, the breadth of the country mm. and the amount of reforms communicating them to the right stakeholders. What would you say is that one challenge, why you're able, not able to get that right? Well, you know, there's so much going on. If I compare 2018 to 2017, in 2017, we had our first national action plan. The polity was quieter. 2018 was like election loading, and there's so much noise out there that the message was getting diffused we also had a non-political project in the sense that we cut across every governor, every state, every uh, legislator. So united, we're all trying to push the same message. Every minister is trying to push the same message. But there's so much else going on out there. For instance, we partner so well with the National Assembly. Okay. But you know what last year was like with the National Assembly mm -hmm. and with the executive. So when you have a lot of uh, other things going on in the polity, trying to push a message consistently out has been challenging. Hmm. Yeah. Speaking about challenges, if you look across, I mean, those areas that Pepe covers, like construction permits, starting a business, land and all of that, which would you say uh, were the most challenging, perhaps from hmm. where most of the complaints came from that made you, you know, 
give more focus to perhaps? We had a lot of, of challenges uh, about the courts. We have Papa Gridlock. The Vice President was there twice last quarter. It's a complex problem with um, issues on both public sector and private sector side. So we've been working with the entire stakeholder mapping to try to figure it out, to try to solve it. I mean, the problems are not unknown and they're not new, uh, down from capacity infrastructure all the way to corruption and inefficiency. So we've been targeting specific areas that need to be fixed, like the road. Significant progress has been made on the road. We need to get the tankers to move up. We need to get the personnel to be more efficient. So that's one area that was really badly hit last year. But we've made a lot of progress in terms of uh, showing the seriousness of the administration to tackle that. We also have things that we're trying to implement, like the National Trading Platform. Nigerian Customs Service has had their NICES 2 already operational. So uh, it's not for want of knowing what to do or addressing the issue. There is some complexity we will continue to work on it until it's solved. Do you think that it may take longer than perhaps anticipated or just because of how complex it is, we might need to exercise a little more patience to in solving that? Because, I mean, some, I, mean I see the tankers, I, I mean, and I just wondered to myself, I know where are these tankers coming from? How long is this queue? And when are we going to solve this problem? I know you say we know what the problems are and perhaps we know how we can solve them, but it would just appear on the surface that there's just no solution in sight. Yeah. So if you take a drive to Apapa today, you see the improvement in the road situation. Uh, we've been having active engagements with the Minister of Power, Works and Housing and his entire team. So, I mean, roads across the country, people that even travel to the east and places like that, we've had very good feedback. But Apapa Gridlock in particular, the road is much better. So now uh, you have to have a proper call-up system there are about two call-up systems in place, and we have terminals, we have the MPA, we have the Navy. Then also, just a trailer park. We have to have more availability for tank, uh, trailers to park and tankers to park. Um, so these are the situations. But importantly, we need more discipline and alignment. Even with logistics companies, the container owners, you know, there's a, a, a people, we need to, as a people, decide that we want it to work. I thought, I mean, if, I thought, sorry about it, I thought yeah. if there are laws and there is uh, effective implementation, I mean, obviously we know in any regular society, man, people would not, you know, tear the line unless there are laws, you know, keeping them in line, unless there are penalties when they, you know, they, you know, they, they, dive, they go out of way. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking, can that, can that be applied in this situation where, yes, there's so much, you know, unruliness, but when there's a law and there's implementation and enforcement, then mm -hmm. automatically people fall in line. Yeah, so these are the issues exactly. Like I said, the vice president was there twice himself last quarter and holding accountable the heads of agencies involved. However, you have some personnel and some private sector. For every bribe giver, there's a bribe taker. And the, the issues of sort of express charge, uh, drivers coming out of the road, uh, out of the queue, paying something, going into the ports. Some are just there. They don't have any business in the ports, but they continue to linger around on the bridge, which, which could potentially be, be a case for the integrity of the bridge. So it's a very serious problem. And we need to, to make sure that everybody in the ecosystem pays attention to making sure that they do the right thing. Now, it's, it's really so, I can't even emphasize it enough. On government's end, we're working on infrastructure, we're working on proper processes, and we're working on the personnel, the accountability. When we have names, we take action. But when there's active collusion between private sector and some officials, uh, bribe giving, bribe taking, then it's, it's, we're, we're out of sort of the, the mix. And so we're uh, now on mystery shopping and trying to find out ourselves and really holding the leadership accountable to making sure that this is cleared up. Would you say that to some extent this, I mean, when one looks at that in a continued uh, a papa port problem, that that casts a shadow on some of the other good things that you've done, that people would probably tend to just look at this one yeah. big problem that hasn't gone away and yeah. forget the other several I mean, good things that have been done? It does. I can name several good things that have happened in the ports, a reduction of, of documentation, more efficiencies, single interface, things that really 
should simplify things, more transparency, more accountability in terms of the port itself uh, and the processes and the terminal operators. But people look and focus on where their pain points are, and rightly so. And even the residents of Apapa are extremely upset about the situation, and rightly so. So it's something that we need to really, as a collective, look at everybody's part and make sure that everybody's doing their part in the quickest possible time. Because the nerve center, the government is also working on other ports across the country mm -hmm. and access and trying to diversify uh, trade away from that one single nerve center. But it affects all of us, believe it or not, the, the amounts, uh, the logistics operators quadruple the amounts, and it affects prices of goods across the country. So, and that's a private sector, to a private sector end. So we all need to together work on solving that challenge. What about the MDAs themselves, the ministries, departments, and agencies? I know that what, part of what PEBEC does is to help build the capacity and to help, you know, help them deliver better and strengthen them overall. Would you say that uh, to a large extent you achieved this in 2018 and perhaps one or two examples that stand out? So we continue to make huge strides, especially with technology. We continue to work with FIRS on their e-payment uh, okay. portal and their e-payment platform and even getting that word out as well. Uh, the Nigerian Immigration Service has continued to power through a more effective and efficient visa on arrival. So you can have a meeting with someone, say, in London on Monday and have them in Lagos by Thursday to meet with your other partners. Uh, those are the kinds of things, leveraging technology, uh, leveraging greater processes, accountability, transparency. That's the recurring theme. Trying as much as possible to reduce costs. You know, uh, CAC has a uh, bonanza of, of uh, 5000 for registration. It was for three months. It's been extended now for another three months okay. because we want more small businesses to get into the formal sector. So there are a number of things across the board that have really stood out. We've worked very hard with NAFDAQ last year. Okay. Yeah, and it's yielding fruit in terms of SMEs. A lot of them have to deal with NAFDAQ and making sure that the processes and the cost. Uh, so we get feedback also. Uh, NAFDAQ wants to increase some fees. Private sector has really kicked back on that, and we've been engaging on that to see how we can re work with them on that. That was Jumoke Uduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. Okay, we're continuing our conversation on Niger's target of a sub-100 ranking in the 2020 World Bank Doing Business Report. Our guest today is Jumoke Uduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. Jumaka, thank you for your time so far. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to 2019. Now, with all that was achieved uh, in 2018, and of course, some things that uh, through the complaints that you're also working on that perhaps you could, uh, you'd also bring into 2019. Give us a picture in terms of what your plans are for 2019. Well, the most important thing about 2019 is that we promised Nigerians that by 2020, Nigeria will be one of the top 100 countries ranked in doing business. And why this is important is that you cannot be top 100 and you don't feel the impact. You have to feel the impact and private sector has to validate and then the DB ranking is an empirical you know, capturing of that. So to achieve that, most importantly, we're going to deepen all that we've done and we need to communicate. I said earlier that we implemented about 53 reforms last year. In total, we've done about 140 reforms since this project commenced. So we have even a handbook so people can know what has been done to validate it and test it, give us the feedback across all the 12, 13 areas. We're going to continue our regulatory reform program. Okay. And we're going to continue with National Assembly partnering to deliver improved legislation for the country. Uh, the Companies and Allied Matters Act has not been overhauled in 28 years. The Senate passed the bill in May last year, and the House has its third reading on Thursday. Okay. So we're just hoping that it goes through. The private sector is very, very excited about that. It does things like um, single person registration of a company, electronic signatures. It removes the need for physical board meetings uh, for SMEs, which means that you can have e-meetings, which reduces cost of cost. Across the board, working with the National Assembly, we also have our omnibus bill coming along. Okay. Yeah. So we have concrete, measurable um, initiatives. Last year, financial derivatives 
did an empirical study on our reforms, and we have the quantitative data for that. We still have a lot to do. It's not to paint an overly rosy picture, but without uh, blowing our own trumpet, there has been marked improvement in the last three years, and we continue to build on that by making sure that Nigerians know what the reforms are, test them, validate them, and give us the feedback. And those are targets for, for 2019? Yes, the okay. target for 2019 is to go under 100. Okay. Yes, in the ranking. Okay. And to make sure that Nigerian businesses across the country okay. know what the reforms are and use them. We also have a subnational initiative, as you know. So we're doing a survey by April so okay. that more businesses know what is available across the country. So this yeah. is going to be, that's going to be a massive awareness yes. campaign. Yes, we have a massive awareness campaign of our existing reforms, and we also have ongoing reforms to tidy up. So we want everybody to know concretely and to test them, mm. because people make a lot of comments based on uh, residual knowledge, but what's current now, if you go to, for instance, go on the immigration website, you're going to see that without seeing a human being, you can get a visa on arrival, you can register a company, you can pay your taxes. There's several things that technology has been leveraged to reduce costs, and time, and of course to enhance transparency. So those are the pillars of okay. the PEBEC, and we continue to drill down across. You know we work with about 50 MDAs. We have the executive order one that ensures accountability, and we continue to push. We actually publish a report on performance of MDAs. Okay, so f as far as technology is concerned, the app that's yeah. uh, the, the, yes. that's still web-based, yes. uh, you mentioned that there isn't enough usage. How yes. are you going to plans to improve that and yes. when is it going to become an actual app? Yeah, it's going to become an actual app by the end of February. This year? Yes, okay. this year, by the end of February 2019. We have had the kiosks at the airports to drive awareness, but sometimes I ask people, do you know about the Pebec kiosk? Did you see it? Um, people are not really aware. Some people do use it. We have about a thousand users currently. Uh, we track uh, the MDAs, the best performing in terms of response time. But the demand for it is one of the key tools for sustainability because when Nigerians know their rights and demand for it, demand for better service and know that they have somewhere that they can report issues to and also commend the MDAs for the good work that they're doing, then it's concrete. We can track the data. We can pinpoint particular pain mm -hmm. points okay. and it's web-based. So anywhere you are across the world, if you have an experience with a Nigerian MDA, you can report that on the portal. Are there instances, yeah. uh, have there been instances in the past, in 2018, especially where uh, following those steps, reporting the, the, uh, the problem, engaging with the MD, and then seeing with how it's been resolved? Have there been instances where you couldn't find a solution or it was just a, a back and forth issue mm. and it was just, I don't know, achieving a win win was difficult? So sometimes when the person doesn't know the proper process, and gets aggrieved. So, so there, there are two issues here. The regulations themselves are, should be known and should be transparent, and private sector should follow the regulations and the laws of the land. But sometimes, either due to insufficient communication or misunderstanding um, or plain venting, people make a report on the app where they're actually in the wrong or they're actually unaware. So we try to educate them. This is the proper procedure. We do it and it's going to be fine. Sometimes the way people are dealt with communication-wise, it's um, sort of abrasive. So we're trying to work on that. We had some high-profile ones, uh, particularly with immigration. And I was very proud of the way the Nigerian Immigration Service officers conducted themselves. Where they made mistakes, they, they conceded. But beyond that, the Comptroller General personally uh, corrected every perception. First of all, they were right on the substance of it, but perhaps maybe the way they had communicated, and there was a very um, bitter tweet that went viral. There was also a very bitter uh, interview that went viral, and the Nigerian Immigration Service addressed the issue, communicated properly to the stakeholders involved, and actually got apologies from two individuals on those very viral things. Now, good news never spreads as quickly as bad news, but the fact is that they handled it, they addressed the situation, they corrected the misperceptions, and they took steps to calm frayed nerves and to get to the bottom of things. 
We've also had incidences where officers have been punished, have been redeployed. Uh, Nigerian Customs Service, there was another um, highly publicized tweet by Kemi Adetiba, and the officers have been redeployed from the airport. Um, there are sanctions. Why we need people to engage on the app, on the portal, is because we get the data. If we can get the name, the time, uh, what the issue is, then we work on them. You can actually look, take up every yeah. single case that comes yeah. up. Because yeah. I know that, I mean, for the, 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 for the airport itself, especially the international airport, mm -hmm. I mean, there's always many times officers, you know, going mm -hmm. beyond and, you know, asking mm -hmm. for something on the side, mm -hmm. bribe, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I've, at the airport, I've seen a couple of numbers and I've often wondered, wondered that uh, that Did number, if work? I call, will it yeah. work? If, you, if somebody does answer on the other side of the line, will my case be actually, actually be taken up? So are you saying that what assurances uh, do Nigerians have that when they make that phone call or if they feel like they've been trapped or, you know, they've been, uh, they, they had to give a bribe for yeah. a service, that yeah. they will, the case will so be taken the, up? So honestly, the Pebec Dot report went to the Federal Executive Council. It's a 72-hour uh, mandate time for MDAs to respond. Pebec itself does work with a handful of key MDAs that are the most public facing. But the executive order applies to every MDA across the country. So we do take the complaints. Now, what happens is that we, we, we have a team, a technical team and a customer service team. So like I said, if there's an error on the part of the person filing or a misunderstanding, we correct, we investigate. Where officers are doing what they shouldn't be doing, we need that information. Because you can't just punish somebody without having the name, the time, evidence, picture if possible, but just details. And we do investigate. There have been several testimonials. The people that have used the app have been pleasantly surprised. Uh, Mr. President himself uh, mandated that every MDA work with this. We've had different initiatives like Servicom, who are also part mm -hmm. of this. The idea is to make sure that this leads to sustainability. To, to have behavioral change, there has to be a demand side and a supply side. So we need that help from private sector. Even as we work with MDAs, we have trainings uh, on EO1. We have refresher trainings planned for this year. We have uh, trainings lined up uh, for customer service and relations. Um, we should empower them also and support them and commend them when they do well. Many public servants do feel that everybody just assumes that they're all corrupt and they're all inefficient. And I've met excellent, excellent public servants in my time. Would you say that, that that perception is changing? Because I remember I asked you this question the last time you mm -hmm. were here in terms of how we're changing mindset, especially, I mean, with public, in, a, in the public sector space. Would you say that that is actually taking root now? It is changing. It is changing. And everybody likes to succeed. And the more we commend these MDAs, I remember when we first started working with some MDAs, they were defensive. They were um, not open to collaborating. Um, are we going to lose our jobs? You know, there was some sense of insecurity, or are we going to just be because watched just out? Just because of the scrutiny. Okay. Yeah, but the way we work together, we sit down weekly to brainstorm and challenge. So why do you do this? Why do you have 10 steps? Do you know how these 10 steps comes across from the private sector end? Why don't we have, what are the three critical ones that we need? And so we, we reason it out. And that's the key to sustainability. It's not PEBEC or EBIS doing the work. We're working collaboratively with MDAs, with public servants. And so now, we're even winning off in the sense that some MDAs, we're just sort of checking in. They've caught the reform bug, okay. and they're sort of like on it every year. They still want us to come to all their events, and we're like, you're sort of, you're gone, you're going. Let's continue with other MDAs. So that's really been, as a lecturer, for me, it's really a delight to see that transition okay. and it's been very fulfilling. Great. Yeah. Now, as you know, when an election year and uh, the incumbent is also going to be scoring off mm -hmm. against other uh, contestants. And so I imagine that, especially from the private sector, are concerned about continuity. If we do not, if the incumbent does not return, there are questions around what happens to Pebec. Is this, uh, uh, is this a, a, a situation where it can stand on its own? Can it, would there be a policy somersault? Is Pebec here to stay, or does it run the risk of being taken out? Well, you tell me. We have every <laughs> intention of continuing. Uh, the incumbent uh, intends to win the elections. Uh, if the good people of Nigeria like what we're doing, this is the first administration that has paid attention 
at such a high profile at, from the presidential level on ease of doing business and has dedicated top resources, including the vice president, at championing this cause. It's not just talk. There have been concrete results that people can point to. So the project is here to stay if Nigerians want it to stay. That was Jumoke Oduwale, Secretary of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. Thus, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch all previous episodes of the show on our website. That's cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets. And you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awone. From myself and the rest of the team, it's bye for now. Thank you.